Oh, this is interesting. AOC made a $250,000, I think it was, uh, donation to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. She uh, earmarked it to uh, specifically the get out the vote uh, stuff so that none of the people running in states where uh, in districts where she would be uh, demonized could weaponize the fact that th that she got money that they got money from her because I think it's probably still the case that Republican right wing Republicans have a higher uh, name recognition of AOC than maybe uh, even uh, Democratic voters. And certainly that was the case for a couple of years. Um, but uh, and she claims that it's a function of I want to you know she's using that it's it's about Donald Trump uh, being a, a unique or the Republicans being a unique threat. I, I think there's some truth to that, but let's listen to her explanation then I'll comment. First and foremost, if Democrats do not retake the House in November, I do not have confidence that a Republican majority would certify the results of a presidential election. Um, the, fa the threat of fascism is very real and very serious, and it's probably at its most serious than we've seen um, in the last two to four years in, in the history of this country, frankly, in some of the history of this country. And so uh, that's number one. Number two, the path to the majority runs through New York State. And this fight has come here to our home. The fight for abortion rights, the fight for democracy is right here in our backyard here in New York State. And I think it's really important that New Yorkers, whether it's from members of Congress to just us as everyday voters, um, take ownership over protecting protecting the country and um, and protecting our, our rights and freedoms. So uh, that to me uh, was a big piece of this and um, and doing our part to make sure that we can win back the House majority, hopefully win a trifecta and try to pass major changes on health care, education, climate and more. So, um, I mean, Putting aside the fact that, you know, uh, whether the Republicans are uniquely fascist now as opposed to before, frankly, um, the thing that I'm encouraged about this, and, and let's also be clear, she's still donating 500 grand, I think it is, to, uh, to say um, that. you know, maintaining uh, the basically uh, the squad. Uh, the incumbents all. from the from the attacks uh, from the right in the Democratic primaries. But from my perspective, and I understand that there are people who say, well, electoral politics are silly uh, or people who say that we, you know we need to make room for all the green party uh congress people and the uh green party uh senatorial candidates um but for better or worse there is about half a dozen to a dozen democratic congress people who are um clearly and consistently the most progressive amongst them. And she is, um, you know, along with a couple others, sort of the premier faces of the of that group. The congressional, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the progressive caucus is, you know, getting a little bit better in terms of like trying to maintain some discipline, et cetera, et cetera. But the bottom line is, if you start with the premise that there is value in the Democratic Party moving as far, far to the left as it can at any given pace, which is not to say that they are leftists in the sense that they are in Europe, but that their policies become increasingly more progressive, um, then this is a good thing. For years, I lamented that uh, Steny Hoyer had such sway over, you know, and, 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 uh, and Pelosi and whatnot had such sway over uh, fellow congressional members because he had the ability to raise all this corporate money, mm -hmm. was in a fairly safe Democratic seat, and was going out and he would show up in every primary. He would be there with the incumbent or he'd be there with a the challenger. If they were going against a Republican, he would be there and he would have... Uh, he would have helped them by giving them money. They, and She like, can exercise power in this way. That's exactly what's going it, on. It would be one thing. First of all, I think that it, I would love to have been a fly on the wall for some of her conversations with Hakeem Jeffries, where he got her to get to this point. What did he 
give really in, in, in exchange is interesting to me. I think it's not just even like that conversation because like, look, she went down that road, that route where she is going to uh, fight against uh, the, the leadership and she lost committee se seats and other um, progressive lost committee seats, whatever it was, you know, Katie Porter off the finance committee, yep. whether it was, uh, you know, um, uh, that was Pelosi. Uh, well, without a doubt, it was Pelosi. But my point being that but that's a, it's a new day. That's it's my a point. New, it's a new day with Hakeem Jeffries, but also it's not just one person, right? Like you need to be able to control some votes. You need to have the benefit of the doubt. You need to have like co-incentric circles in which your power can expand. And this is an expansion of that power. It would be one thing if she were doing this and had renounced the DSA or had said, I don't seek their endorsement anymore. But she is a DSA endorsed politician, right? That matters a lot to me. And she has developed a fundraising apparatus due to this like incredible amount of attention that was brought onto her. Um, that she now has the ability to use her leverage in ways that she thinks is appropriate. And so if she had done this and was like moving away from the DSA or was moving away from the grassroots organizing that got her to this point, then I think criticism would be warranted. But I don't really ha I haven't seen too much, especially because of how she's earmarked it. And especially I think what what it indicates is that this is, you know, one of the furthest left politicians in my lifetime who's gaining material power within the Democratic Party. They care about fundraising. 100%. Like, why did, I mean, Nancy Pelosi is still out there doing hits on cable news, even though she's not the leader of the Democrats in the House anymore, because she's still one of the top fundraisers in the Democratic Party. So that's where the power lies, unfortunately. And AOC has been able to develop a small dollar fundraising apparatus that gives her a foot in the door. So we should be happy about that as opposed to... I think being knee jerk uh, critical. Yep. Yep. The more that that, uh, uh, and it's just an extent, uh, uh, sadly, in the context of our politics, you know, the, that's what uh, projecting power is within um within the 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 caucus, and uh, essentially. Also, like you know, the this point was made, but working with Republicans every day in the House must make you feel like oh my God, we have to keep these insane people out of power at all costs. Well, I think like all true. of her, the, that, that like class of, of politicians that came in when she did and, and really that have come in subsequently, even the ones who are not necessarily whose who's, who's, uh, ideologies or, or policy prescriptions are ones you know, that uh, are uh, to, to the right of, uh, of mine, understand that both A, the Republican Party is bat crap crazy, but B that like you're an op you, you guys it's 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 a partisanship is actually an effective mechanism whether you're using it um, to uh, to further you know more progressive policies or less progressive policies and you know again yeah. I keep like citing like you know like in Michigan and I think uh when i look at like whitmer uh, at all i think they're you know in terms of like what their policy prescriptions are uh i would say they're to the right of me but in terms of like them taking the fight to republicans and being partisan um they're effective they're yeah. effective i think so much of like what determines how well a politician is going to be do is contextual too so i think like there's certain things that we've criticized about aoc but largely like i think her feelings aren't hers as an individual but more like this is what happens when we have like candidates that we support going into a very hostile environment and on the flip side greg kassar ducked israel as an issue throughout his entire campaign and even initially under october after october 7th wasn't very good on but he's moved in the right direction from my perspective Perspective on that calling for a ceasefire because it's, of the context he's in. In context, when somebody comes out here and, you know, when Nancy Pelosi signs that document, as much as like we have like you know, been cynical about her reasons for doing so. Conditioning her, aid. Well, the, yeah, conditioning aid, you know, cynical about like, well, she did it because her favorite chef, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, it helps. It, it, it provides oxygen and cover for other people to come in and do it. I mean, that's just the way these politics work. Uh, Deep State Chihuahua says if AOC's donations are earmarked for a general get out the vote campaign, how how will she leverage that money to sway votes? Are Congress people whose campaigns are bolstered by our contributions going to know behind the scenes? Every dollar that she puts in to the get out the vote campaign are dollars that are freed up to go 
to frontline um, uh, uh, politicians and the leadership is aware of it. So it, it is, uh, you know, she's going to give money to politicians that she's more closely aligned with. Yeah. But it both, it, you know, it both helps her and helps them that she doesn't have to give money directly to a, you know, uh, a politician she might not, uh, you know, uh, there might be more sort of ideological divergence with.